Hello folks and welcome to a new Tiny Games Lab tutorial. This time I'm going to teach you how to do this little tennis or modified pawn game okay, that you see on the screen. So basically the objectives for this session are to use or to fake items height by using shadows, use easy functions to make the ball bounce on the game and to create an awesome game mechanic as always. Okay, so how do you fake height in the game? So how do we perceive height, no? Let's say I have a room and this room has an item like a ball. So the way it is set up right now, you have no idea what is the height of this ball in relation to this room. So with a little trick, adding a little shadow, we actually make us perceive that there is some height. Okay, so the ball is not actually fixed to the screen or in the same plane as the background, but it's actually, it does have height. And how do you also manage this in the game and to make it change heights? So let's say I have this item that has an Y offset in relation to this, its, its shadow. And I start moving this object in relation to its shadow. So right now your brain is thinking, okay, this ball is bouncing. And I was actually doing this. The ball is actually moving up and upwards and downwards towards the shadow. So it's not actually bouncing. And in our game, we're going to do something similar with this. And you can see right here, like, let's say we move the ball one way or the other and keep doing this bouncy effect. So we're going to be doing the same thing in our game. Okay. And how we're going to get this nice bouncing effect, we're going to use a quadratic easing. So what is an easing or a quadratic easing? So we're going to be switching our Y offset of the ball. Uh, in time, it's not going to be a linear change, it's going to be a quadratic change. That's why we use a quadratic function. I'm going to teach you how to do this script. And what we're actually doing, we're doing one, using this function to go down, then using the same function to go up. Okay, this is not physically correct, but it's enough to fake our bouncy in the game. So I'm going to use three quarters of the total time to go down and one quarter of the total time to come up. And also we have to know how to handle our collisions when we are dealing with objects with different heights in the game. So basically, let's say I have the room, I have the player, and I have the ball. So how do I actually handle collisions in this case? So you're going to see in our game that the collision masks, they are like ground masks or shadow masks. So let's say for the racket, it's going to be the shadow of the racket in the ground. For the ball, it's going to be actually the shadow of the ball. And whenever one moves towards each other and the shadows align, you have a collision. Okay, so let's go to the coding. So inside Game Maker, let's add some sprites. I'm going to start by adding a sprite player, SPR player. Okay, and let's load the image. It's going to be an image sequence of three images. And you can see that's basically the player swinging. I'm going to set the origin right about here, maybe 64 by 110, perfect. And let's modify the mask. So we're going to do this shadow mask thing. So let's add the manual mask. I want to get this racket region only. So the left is going to be about 40, 84, 90, and 119. Okay, perfect. And let's click OK and let's duplicate this. I'm going to use the same for my enemy, so SPR enemy. Okay, let's edit the sprite and let's actually load it from here. Okay, there we go, loaded. Image sequence. And we have the tree, the swinging image. Masks already done. Let's click OK. Let's create a new sprite. It's going to be sprite ball. And let's load this sprite, which is this ball, and let's just center it. And new sprite, SPR, shadow, okay? So let's add this shadow and center, and we're done with the sprites. So let's create a new background, and let's load our court, okay? There we go, easy as that. Let's create a new script. So this script is going to be called easy quad in. OK, 
okay and basically uh, let's add some code to it no so let's start by adding this uh, nice little code here so we know what it is when we're using the script the description of the script and this function i got it from this website that is gizma.com slash easy so it's going to take three arguments var t which is time argument zero it's going to be var b equals zero that's the start value var c equals one that's change in value because i want to go from zero to one and var d which is argument one which is the duration okay and it's going to be two lines of code so the first one is t divided equals to d so it's dividing t by d on this script and next line is going to be return which is c times t times t plus b easy as that so let's add an object and i'll call this object wall so o wall i'm going to add the shadow sprite as the my sprite so i want the shadow to be my object and i want the height to change with the ball so let's create some code here creation code and let's start by setting up some things so targets x is going to be choose between 80 160 240 320 or 400 so i want to choose a place in between these five positions in the screen x range is how much my x is going to change uh when I'm playing from one side to the other of the screen, so target X minus my X. My range is the same thing, so I'm going from O player to O enemy. I'm gonna create these two objects in a while. So I want to know how much I want to move in the Y axis. Time equals 60, that's the time it's gonna to take to go through the screen. Okay. Height of the ball is gonna be 50 pixels. So that's our Y offset that I showed you earlier. I'm gonna have a counter equals to zero and that's what we're going to use for the easy. And counter direction equals to 1. I want to increase my counter when I'm easing in, and I want to decrease when I'm easing out. So for the step event, let's add some code to it. So let's start by moving the ball. So y is going to be plus equal minus y range divided by time. And my x is the same thing, x range divided by time. Counter, I'm increasing my counter by my counter gear variable. Okay, in this case, I'm increasing by one. And we're gonna do some if statements. So the first if is let's check if our absolute counter is greater than 75% of our time. So three quarters of our time. So if you have reached three quarters of our total time to cross the court, I'm gonna change the direction. Oh, so it's minus counter, now my counter direction. And I'm gonna multiply by three because I want to uh, do three steps at a time to reach the full way back so three quarters of the way i go forward one quarter i come backwards okay then let me check if my y position equals to my clamp of my y position my player y minus 12 and my player y plus 12 so i want to check if i'm within this range okay so is my y position within this player y position range minus 12 and plus 12 if it is we move forward with this if statement so if position meeting x y and object player so have i actually hit the player or hit the shadow of the racket of the player if that happened then i have a collision between the ball and the racket so target x is going to be choose again and the same values so i'm going to choose a new target in the x position my x range is going to be target x minus x my y range is going to be object enemy y minus object player y counter set to zero count direction set back to one and my object player image index i'm going to change it to one because i want this to be my animation my swinging effect animation when i hit the ball okay and time minus equals one so my time is decreasing from 60 and it's going to be harder each time i reach the ball i hit the ball with the racket it's going to be a little bit harder to play the game so it increases difficulty i'm going to do the same function again but this time checking for object enemy so has the, the enemy hit the ball so basically the same thing we just copy the function change all player to all enemy okay chooses the same we're choosing the five same positions on the x wax axis the range is the same y range now we have something different we're switching around object player with object enemy because now i want to go upwards downwards sorry on the screen 
counter equals to zero, counter direction equals to one, object image, object enemy image equals to one, and time minus equals to one. Okay, so it keeps getting difficulty, more difficult and more difficult as you go forward with the game. And our last if statement is gonna be if our y is less than zero or our y is greater than room height, it means that the ball has left the screen, we're gonna restart the game, basically as that. So let's use some room restart function, okay? So let's go to the draw event, okay? And let's do some drawing magic. First, let's draw some stuff. Let's draw ourselves, okay, which is the shadow, and let's draw our sprite ball now. So let's draw a sprite ball, sub image zero. I don't have any sub image to that. X position is gonna be our shadow X position also. Our Y position is where the magic happens. So it's gonna be Y minus our height variable, minus our height times our is quad in function. Okay, and this function is gonna take as time the absolute of my counter variable and my time, my total time is gonna be time times 0.75 because I want to go forwards and backwards, okay? And that's basically it for a drawing event. And with that, we are able to draw the shadow, we are able to draw the ball, and we have this nice bouncy effect with this easing function. So let's add O player object, sorry. O underline player object. Let's add some code. So let's add some creation code to the player. So I'm gonna set my target steps gonna be equal to 80, so I want to move 80 pixels to the left to the right when I press left and right keys. My target X is gonna be X, so I'm gonna start with this target in the same position as the player is. And my move step is gonna be eight pixels, so I want to move eight pixels per step of the game, or per frame of the game. Very simple, no? So let's add some step event now. And so go to this step event. So first we're gonna check the input of the player. So if we pressed left or key or right. So it's gonna be a if statement with keyboard check pressed, VK, VK left. So if we press left, that's our target's gonna be the clamp between our target minus our target step within 80 and 400 pixels. I want to be within this range of the screen. If we press the right key, it's gonna be the same thing, but we're gonna be adding the target to our target step, okay? in 80 and 400. So in this way we move 80 pixels sideways each direction. Step towards the target node. So now we're gonna have our X is gonna be plus equals to sine of our target minus X times clamp between the absolute value of our targets minus X divided by three. So we're doing this very, very subtle easing effect towards the target, okay? And it's going to be between zero and the move step. So I want to move it maximum eight pixels and minimum zero. Then I'm going to do a switch statement. And I'm going to switch my image index. So that's what gives us a little animation. So in case our image index equals to zero, my image speed is equal to zero. I want to have the player in the same frame if the image index equals to zero. In case it equals to one, let's say we hit a ball, we change our image index to one. I want my image speed equals to one. So it's gonna start the swinging animation. And in case two, my last frame of animation, I want my image speed to be equal to point two. So I want to be five steps or five frames before I move forward with this. Okay, and let's add some break and let's close down this code. And we're done with the coding here. Let's, sorry. Let's just add the sprite here. I forgot the sprite for the player. So, and I'm gonna change the depth also to minus one because I want it to be in front of the ball. I'm gonna duplicate the player. I'm gonna change this to O enemy, okay? On the creation code, let's go to the creation code. I'm gonna add a new variable that instance create, new variable, sorry, no, new function, instance create and I want to create here on my X and Y position, my object ball. Perfect. So when the game starts, the ball is gonna be created right into the enemy X and Y positions. And on my step event, I want to change this VK right and VK left to ORD A and ORD D. So the enemy is gonna be playing with A and D keys in the keyboard, yourself gonna be playing on the left and right arrow keys on the keyboard.
Okay. So I'm going to change the depth to one because I want to be behind the wall. And I want to change my sprites to sprite enemy. Perfect. So let's create a new room. Okay, this room is going to be 480 by 720. And let's change the snapping to 80 and 40. So it's easier to snap things to the screen. I'm going to add my foreground, which is my court. And let's add some objects. Let's add an enemy here on top of the screen. And let's add my player here at the bottom of the screen. So that should be it. Let's save and try it out. And you can see the game is working. So the enemy starts by hitting the ball and then gives it to the player and the player has to hit it back. And as, as the game progresses forwards, it gets faster and faster. So it's harder and harder to hit the ball. Okay. In the way it's configured, you're playing with two people on the same keyboard or yourself against yourself. But it's very nice to see how the game mechanic works. You can implement AI to play for the enemy. You can switch sides around whenever you hit some score. So you can use this for a lot of things. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed my new microphone, which gave us, us a new sounding to the tutorial. And if you want to see more tutorials like this, please let me know in the comments. And please let me know if you want to see anything else in this channel. Also, click on the like button if you like this tutorial and click on the subscribe button if you like my channel and would like to receive notifications of my new tutorials. Okay, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you on the next one.